Hello and welcome back to Kim Reads as we continue with Pollyanna. Chapter 6, Schedules, Duties, and Punishments. Pollyanna awoke early the next morning. The, the sky was pure blue and she ran to the window to walk to talk about the chopping, chirping birds. Think her aunt in the garden, she dressed quickly and ran to join her. Oh, Aunt Polly, I reckon I'm just glad to be alive on this beautiful morning. She flung her arms around Miss Polly's neck. Is this usually the way you say good morning? Asked Aunt Polly, pulling away from the embrace. Only when I love people a whole lot, said the little girl. I was just thinking that you really are my aunt, and not just a lady's aider, and I was so glad that I had to hug you. That will do for the morning, said Miss Polly, walking away. Pollyanna lingered in the garden. Miss, Mr. Tom looked at her tearfully. You look so much like your mother, little miss. I've been ordering her ever since she was a little girl like you. Really? You knew my mother? Please tell me all about her. Pollyanna plopped down on the ground next to the gardener, but suddenly a bell rang and Nancy ran to fetch Pollyanna. The bell means a meal's being served, Is Pollyanna, she said breathlessly. You need to run fast as when you can hear it. If you don't, it'll be hard for you or me to find anything to be glad about. Miss Polly was seated at the breakfast table and frowning. Nancy, she said sternly, where did those flies come from? Oh, I reckon they're my flies, Polly Ann chimed in. Yours? P Miss Polly screamed. But where'd they come from? From outside, of course, Aunt Polly. More of them are in my room. Miss Polly turned to look at Nancy with a look of horror on her face. Go at once to Miss Pollyanna's room and close the windows, and then get the fly squatter into every room in the house. She turned to your niece. I did my duty and ordered those screens for those windows, but you must have forgotten your duty. My duty? Yes, of course. I know your room is hot, but you mustn't open the windows until the screens arrive. Flies are not only dirty and noisy, but also very dangerous for your health. They have many germs. After breakfast, I'll give you a booklet on the subject. Oh, thank you, Aunt Polly. I love to read, and I promise not to open the windows again. Pollyanna was reading when Miss Polly entered her room. Oh, I never knew so many interesting things about flies, the little girl began. That'll do, Pollyanna, her aunt replied sternly. Go to your closet now and bring me your things. Well, I'm afraid you won't like them, said Pollyanna, biting her lip. Even the ladies' aide said they were awful, and of course, they've been in black if it wasn't for the carpet for the church. Did you ever have a church bear or Aunt Polly? Her aunt stared at her in disbelief. Oh, of course you didn't. Rich people don't need those things. So I forgot how rich you were being up here in this room, you know. Anyway, barrels were also the hardest thing I had to play the game on. Father said she stopped quickly, remembering that Aunt Polly had told her not to talk about her father. Her aunt, her aunt changed the subject quickly. I suppose you have gone to school, Pollyanna? Oh, yes, Aunt Polly. Very well. You will enter school here in the fall. I suppose it's my duty to listen to you read aloud each day for half an hour. Oh, I'd love to read, Aunt Polly, but if you don't want to listen, I'd be very glad to just read my myself. I'm sure that's true, Pollyanna. Have you studied music? I played piano at church, but I like other people's music best. Well, I suppose it's my duty to teach you some basic things about music. You know how to sew, I hope.
Oh yes, the ladies they taught me. And cooking, they taught me that too. I can make chocolate and fig cake. Chocolate and fig cake indeed, snored Miss Polly, making some notes on a pad of paper. Here's your schedule, Pollyanna. Each morning after breakfast, you will make your room neat. Then from 9 o'clock until 9.30, you will read out loud to me. After reading, you will sew with me. Except for Wednesdays and Saturdays, when Nancy will teach you how to cook. Afternoons will be for your music. But Aunt Polly, you haven't left time for me just to... Just to live! What on earth do you mean, child, as if you aren't living all the time? Of course I'm breathing all the time, even when I'm asleep, but that isn't living. Living is playing outdoors, climbing hills, talking to Mr. Tom and Nancy, and exploring. Miss Polly, Simon Brown. Of course, you will be allowed a proper amount of playtime, but it seems to me that if I'm willing to do... My duty to, get a, to give you proper care and instruction. You should be willing to do your duty by making sure things that this care and instruction aren't wasted. Turning to leave, she added, Timothy will drive us down into town at 1 o'clock this afternoon. I will not be doing my duty if I let my niece wear those clothes you brought in. We shall buy new and proper ones. Oh, thank you, Aunt Polly. P please. Is there any way you can be glad about that duty stuff? Don't be disrespectful, Pollyanna. Her aunt scolded. The only thing left to do, Pollyanna thought to herself, is to be glad when the duty is done. At exactly one o'clock, they set out to buy material to sew for Pollyanna's new clothes. The salespeople fell in love with the cheerful and talkative child. After shopping and eating dinner, Pollyanna played the get glad game with Nancy. I just hate my name, said Nancy. All my brothers and sisters have such pretty names. Florbella, Estelle. But I love the name Nancy just because it's you, said Pollyanna. Anyway, you should be glad that your name is Hebzibah. Hudsaba, what kind of name is that? That was Mrs. White's name. Her husband calls her Hep. Nancy burst out loudly. Maybe I should be glad after all. Soon it was Pollyanna's bedtime. She undressed, folded her clothes neatly, said her prayers, blew out her candle, and climbed into bed. She lay sleepless for hours in the heat. Finally opened the door. and walked to the window inside her room. A full moon lit up the attic. Below the window was the tin roof of Miss Polly's sun parlor. The garment bags with windows close on hooks near the window. Pollyanna chose two large bags, opened the Window far enough to push them down on the roof and climb out. She made a mattress of hill with the bags and curled to sleep. Inside the house, Miss Polly was pale with fright. She phoned Tom. Please come right away with a ladder and lay her. Someone is on the roof of my sun parlor. Tom and Timothy climbed a ladder, peered over the edge of the roof, and chuckled when they saw the girl, but Miss Polly was not, not amused. Pollyanna, what does this mean? She shrieked in horror. It's alright, Aunt Polly. It's just that my room was so hot. I closed the window because of the hot ice. Couldn't get in the house. Pollyanna, until the screens come, you will sleep in my bed with me. It is my duty to know where you are always. Oh, thank you, Aunt Polly. It will be so nice to... Stay in your room. Now I won't be so lonely. Soon Pollyanna was sleeping peacefully on her aunt's soft sheets. A pink satin bedspread covered her and matched the curtains on Miss Polly's windows. A grateful Pollyanna snuggled in. And that's the end of that chapter. I will see you later. Thanks for listening.